welcome to Join at Home. Since you're watching this, you already know that Join is the data fan's favorite conference. But Join at Home is more than just a conference. Educational. Engaging. Engaging. Inspirational. You're on mute. No one can hear you. Digital, inclusive, and streaming version of our Join conference. It's delicious. 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 <laughs> Data driven. Nutritious. It's not a protein bar. Four days of presentations and breakout sessions in the latest in practical data skills so attendees can network with fellow data enthusiasts. And engage with leaders across the data community. Yeah, like I said, nutritious and digital. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> But this year, Join at Home is more globally diverse than ever. So tell us, where are you joining from? Hey, it's Gogo. I'm joining from the English Seaside in Devon. Hey, I'm Gigi joining from Austin. <laughs> I'm Noras Haddad, and I'm joining from Croatia. I'm Alba, and I'm joining from Brooklyn, New York. Who's that good? This is Diego, joining from Santa Cruz. Hey, this is Nihal, joining from Brooklyn. Hi, it's Julia, joining from San Francisco. <laughs> hey everyone, John, joining from Aptos, California. You know, we here at Looker want you to have the best joint at home possible, so Look up that schedule, connect, learn, network, and we'll see you there. Now, in the meantime, it is my pleasure to introduce to you your host for Join at Home, Jen Green. Take it away, Jen. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the keynote presentation for Join at Home. I'm Jen Green, Diversity Programs Manager for Looker, and I'm very pleased to be your host for this special Join at Home keynote. Today, we'll hear about where the idea of Join at Home came from, how Lookers have adapted to the challenges we've all been facing, and Looker's role within Google Cloud. Plus, we have a special customer guest, an exciting product announcement, and much more. But right now, there's no better way to kick off our keynote and properly welcome all of you to Join at Home than hearing from Looker's VP and self-described big data guy, Frank Bien. Take it away, Frank. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Join 2020. Thanks so much for taking the time out of your schedules to spend time with us this week. Um, if you're like me, I know you're probably fed up and, and had enough with web conferencing and screen time to last, uh, you know, your lifetime. In the last seven months, we've clearly had a lot of that. But behalf, on behalf of, of everyone here at Looker and at Google Cloud, welcome and thanks so much for participating this week. You know, last year when we held this conference, it was in San Francisco at a a famous old music venue uh, remade into a conference center called the Fillmore West. And, and back in the late 60s, as we talked about last year, there were some of the biggest bands, you know, Led Zeppelin and Janis Joplin that played there. I felt like a rock star up on stage. It was really cool. And, and in the sign of the times this year, I'm in the little room. That's a nice room and in the back of my house. And I am completely alone here. Uh, so yeah, things are really quite a bit different this year, and uh, I know we've all we've all been dealing with that. You know, it, it does feel like an understatement to say that uh, 2020 has been a difficult year, and I think there's challenges every year. Um, but the adversity we've all faced in 2020 has been extraordinary, and you know the human toll has been significant pandemics, racial injustice, fires, hurricanes, I mean, who knows what else? Uh, hopefully not a lot. But uh, it's not just in the abstract, it's not just on the news. I mean, people have lost, lost their lives, their jobs, their homes, and it's a pain that we all share. And I know that the Looker family has felt some of this pain directly as well. 
And I imagine that many of you have family or friends that have been impacted in, in some way. Um, so I'm not trying to bring anybody down, but the point here is that clearly there's some more consequential stuff going on and happening in the world uh, than, you know, a data conference. So when I say, you know, I appreciate you joining this week, uh, I know that it, it carries a special meaning. I know this is a user and customer conference, um, but I, I did want to take a moment and recognize the Looker team here, many of which are, are watching right now. Um, I'm, I'm incredibly proud of the way that, that you've come together and that we've come together through all this, including through you know, dozens we had recently evacuated in the wildfires here in the Bay Area. You know, also, interestingly, during this crazy year, we onboarded to Google uh, on March 3rd. Um, you know, the acquisition was announced around the last user conference days, but, but it was uh, really not until March that we onboarded and became Google employees and got Google badges and theoretically could get the, the free food in the buildings. And that was exactly the week that everything shut down. So uh, in addition to, to, you know, going through an acquisition process and going through an onboarding, suddenly everybody had to go and, and work from, from home. And, you know, I really thank everyone at Looker for everything that you've done this year. I'm personally, you know, truly humbled and honored to be part of this team. And, you know, I'm, I'm just continually impressed at how adaptable and committed uh, to this awesome, awesome customer community you all are. So thanks to the Looker team. And, and speaking of that adaptability, uh, it's really what made this event possible. Um, this year, it's a special version of our annual user conference that we're calling Join at Home. And the idea behind it was uh, to face this, this challenging time and find an opportunity to create a brand new experience for you all. And the goal is to give the Looker community, you all, a chance to connect with experts, increase your Looker skills, and learn from your peers um, when we can't gather all in one location. Uh, so we built this completely digital experience with the goal of bringing join directly into your living room and into your kitchen and into your office and backyard or wherever you're watching from. And, you know, while a digital event can't replace the value of being together and connecting face to face, um, you know, we feel confident that we've created a, a quality and terrific experience for you. But in this virtual world, we've been able to take our joint energy and focus it even more on developing some great content. Uh, and also ways that you could meet and interact together. So first, we'll be kicking things off here this morning uh, with our Looker product leaders, and Ronaldo and Jamie and the team will be, will be talking about where the industry is headed and how companies are finding new ways to get value from data. You know, and then we'll move into product announcements and the product roadmap sessions. And we'll be showing you some of the newest features that we're introducing in the platform and, and give you a glimpse under the covers into what's coming next in the product roadmap. And, you know, there's some great examples you should look out for, you know, how we're focusing on scale and administration of large numbers of users. You know, there'll be a session on, you know, making it easier to build data products, you know, really faster on the platform and the things that we're building there, uh, and, and how we're going to be helping get more value out of your SaaS applications that you're using, pulling data, you know, uh, with pre-built connectors to, to those SaaS applications. And, and we'll also be really continuing the theme of providing, you know, really quick, faster time to insights and be introducing some industry-specific solutions this year as well. And of course, we'll have plenty of breakouts and you'll be able to hear from product experts. Uh, this year we'll have over 40 breakout sessions and it'll range in topics from you know, data leadership and innovative use cases to you know, some of the more technical topics like LookML model development and building data applications. You know, personally, I'm really looking forward to some, some uh, sessions. You know, Lena and Liz will be doing uh, a whole presentation on Looker for the Google Marketing Platform. Um, we'll be doing 
a session on using Looker and media companies led by Chris Billet. And um, our own Joel McKelvey will be leading a session on you know, Looker at scale and using our, our system activity analytics. So, th so those are just three of the things that I'll be looking forward to watching this week. And like any user conference, uh, one of the biggest benefits is learning from your peers. And, and this year in our customer sessions, you'll have over 17 Looker customers who will be talking about their own experiences and what they're doing to drive data projects and data culture within their organizations. Um, some highlights, you know, KK from Farfetch will be leading a session on entrepreneurial approach to driving data culture. And really, like, how do you build a tribe uh, during a pandemic? That's a unique challenge. Uh, Common Care Alliance will be doing a, a, a session on user data to monitor and, and react to and help patients with COVID-19. So, you know, very topical uh, for what's going on. And AppsFlyer will be talking about really analyzing petabytes of data, um, you know, looking at mobile attribution and marketing analytics. And that's interesting in that it's, it's really, uh, you know, a multi-cloud environment with AWS Athena, RDS, as well as Google BigQuery. So that'll be another interesting one to watch among the 17 others. You know, product training has always been a big part of JOIN and it will continue to be again this year. And you've told us and we've heard that one of the biggest things that you're interested in is some, some deeper technical education. So we'll continue on multi-levels of education, have a little bit more on the advanced stuff, and really incorporate that into an overall training program as, as part of JOIN. Um, I think the response has been wonderful. You know, we're going to have four learner paths uh, with 56 interactive workshops that'll include some live hands-on labs and you know one of one of our favorites is the hackathon event will, which will be going on again this year um, and the trainings will be offered both live so there will be some live components as well as some self-paced uh, format so you'll be able to join in a number of different ways and looking forward to that and of course being connected is at the core of any user conference um, and that's obviously one of the unique challenges to try and do virtually. But I think the team has come up with some great ways to approach it. And, and we'll be coming up with some ways that you can connect, that you can work with your peers, and that uh, we can be together even though we're not in the same physical location. We're calling those Meet the Expert as well as the Data Circles of Success. Um, both were really in demand and, and basically, you know, filled up right when they were announced. So hopefully you were able to get into some of those. And there's some really cool subjects. I mean, we'll have topics on women in tech, um, gracefully scaling the data architecture, dealing with sensitive data, um, or there'll be other stuff like demos, you know, technical topics like demos on aggregate awareness or, or stuff on the Looker Marketplace and and the Google marketing platform block. So a lot of great things to connect together around and, and really start to build more relationships with other folks who are doing Looker projects. And as you can imagine, there's no conference floor with, with lots of our partners showing cool stuff this year. Um, I always really enjoyed walking around and, and talking to the partners and seeing what, what folks were building. Um, but partners are, are still a big part of join at home, and it, it's really the partners that have made this possible. So we have over 20 technical and consulting partners um, you know, that are sponsored here, sponsors here from both North America and Europe. And you know, while it's virtual, they're very much participating and in, in present. There'll be five partner-led sessions, so each of the track categories will have one led by a partner. We'll have opportunities virtually for one-on-one -on -one meetings with the partners. And, and we're really going to connect and have the partners connect with the audience through virtual experiences and events. You know, you know you'll be invited to you know, have a virtual whiskey tasting or a fireside chat with, with some of the partners. So we really try to come up with some creative ways that the partners are participating and, and you can really find out what cool things they've been building. So thanks to the partners. I'm sure that we're all disappointed that we can't see each other in person this year. 
Um, but I hope at the end of this conference, you'll feel that you've learned new skills, learn more about Looker, uh, and more about how to build data culture uh, that you can apply back home. We're inspired each year by the innovative use cases that, that we learn that you all are doing with, with Looker, and this year will be no different. Um, I hope that you have a chance to connect with, with folks that you uh, can learn from, and I really appreciate everyone supporting the conference uh, virtually this year. Our success has always been a direct, set, uh, direct result of your success and the success of your projects, and, and that's never been more true than this year. So my best wishes to you and your loved ones for the remainder of the year and beyond. And I, I'm hoping that 2020 and into 2021 brings even greater understanding and hopefully fewer challenges for all of us. Um, so enjoy the content that we've put together over the next three days, whether you're watching asynchronously or live for, for some of the sessions and, and hang in there. I hope to see you next year in person where we can shake hands and maybe have a, have a coffee or a beer. And and thanks. Thanks for participating in Join at Home 2020. Thanks for the warm welcome, Frank. And a big thanks from Looker to all of our Join at Home sponsors. Next up, our first keynote presenter, Looker EPD leader, Ronaldo Amas, to tell us about Looker's role within Google Cloud and share some perspectives on the direction for data infrastructure and data applications and what this means for Looker customers. Welcome everyone and good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So, thank you for joining us. A real pleasure to speak with you all, all of you today. Uh, it's been quite a year, hasn't it? Uh, it certainly has been for the Looker team. And I have to say, uh, we're now officially Googlers. Uh, it's been exciting to say the least. And uh, as you can expect, as many other things in the world, a few things have changed. Uh, to begin with, we have a new logo. It's beautiful, love it. It keeps the history of Looker and it embodies the colors of Google. It's a great combination. But also we have a redesigned new website, which looks pretty good. So many thanks to our marketing and, and few teams for actually collaborating there. I hope you get great value out of the information there. I also have a new role. Uh, I'm now responsible for the Looker product area inside Google Cloud, and I help connect all of the functions to make sure that we continue to serve you all really well. But not everything has changed. Our team is still there. Here's a wonderful picture from a join last year. In fact, our team has grown a lot bigger and our mission remains the same. I love our mission is to empower people through the smarter use of data. Uh, and this is always gonna be there. Another thing that will always be there is our commitment to support you, our customers, on multiple clouds and multiple databases. We're dedicated to making you all happy and successful and that will never change. We also continue investing in our car product, delivering new capabilities to help you get more value from data, pushing our technology vision forward. These things don't change either. But these are things that make us looker. These are fundamental to our identity. They're part of our values, and they'll definitely not change. And lookers and helpers are doers by nature. One of our core values is, as a matter of fact, called do. As Frank highlighted before, the COVID-19 pandemic has altered our lives and the effects have been devastating. Maybe our health, our families, our jobs, our businesses got affected. And what has Looker done? We acted. So even though we're not on the front lines, we found ways to use our technology to contribute. Right after the pandemic started, we launched a free COVID-19 data block with pre-built LookML models, dashboards, and explorers and links to data from places like Johns Hopkins, the COVID tracking project, the Italian government, and many more. It's a, it's a way for us to help healthcare workers save lives, help business prepare better, help researchers understand how the virus is spreading to mitigate its impact. We also worked with the Commonwealth Care Alliance, or CCA, a nonprofit healthcare organization in Massachusetts. CCA helps tens of thousands of people in the state, most of them elderly and low-income individuals, the people mostly impacted or at risk from COVID-19. 
CCA members depend on support services like uh, Meals on Wheels, community centers, special home care. But what happens if these services are shutting down because of the pandemic? You know, how do we help them out? Looker helps CCA with insights on their members' particular situations so they can identify the most urgent cases that need attention more immediately. For example, they use geolocation to understand which members are in high-risk areas. So they look at which services are available or not. As a consequence, they can actually cater to people that require special attention. These insights put CCA in a great position to help their members and potentially save lives. Another example where Looker is contributing is at a company called Sound Commerce. Sound Commerce helps retail brands better forecast and manage their inventory. So they help very large retailers as well as local and small businesses. So many of these retailers experienced an accelerated shift from you know, store to commerce uh, transactions during COVID-19. This is a big adjustment, especially for those that do business mainly in their stores. So the pandemic forced them to close stores potentially, rethink their business, but the customers that were using Sound Commerce's solution were able to pivot their operations more quickly. That solution gave retailers instant visibility into their inventory. And we're talking about granular insights like uh, size, color, location of an item. With that information at hand, those insights, retailers were able to repurpose their stores into fulfillment centers. So as a customer orders online, items can de de be delivered where they're most closely uh, located to them, providing improved customer satisfaction and better operations as a whole. So this is actually quite impressive because uh, you know, you know, they're forced to reduce their warehousing space, but they were able to take advantage of the storefronts in terms of, uh, instead of closing them, providing for a delivery uh, center. So in particular, we saw people moving like from 30% online to 70% online and using, using Sun Commerce's solution with Looker Insights uh, to benefit that transition. I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize customers like CCA, Sound Commerce, and many others that have made a real difference in their efforts during this time of the pandemic. Thank you. One common thread across these examples is the ability to react to change. These customers use data to respond to an environment that changed suddenly and drastically. And there are many, many more examples of organizations that pull together their technology resources to lead through those changes either by helping combat the pandemic or helping the business navigate the crisis, leading through change is a common quality of great organizations. And there are those that endure and remain relevant over time. So the world is changing very rapidly and we're experiencing fundamental changes in our industry. According to IDC, within the next three years, more than half of all GDP worldwide will be driven by products and services from the digital enterprises. This is important because it means the digital economy is approaching a tipping point. It also means that companies that are not ready to compete will probably fall behind. We've seen this before, right? Blockbuster, Borders, Toys R Us, unfortunate examples of successful companies in the past that failed to innovate and then disappeared. What does this mean to you? It means that as data leaders and data professionals, you are in a unique position to help your organization navigate to this agile digital economy. There's also a study by Gartner that actually shows that data and analytics is the number one investment priority for technology leaders driving digital transformation. This is a tremendous opportunity for all of us, and all of you in particular, to influence the direction of your company. It doesn't matter what your title is. If you have the ability to shape data strategy in your organization, this puts you in a very strong position of leadership. It makes you a data leader, and you can help create a data culture. That means injecting data into people's work in a way that hasn't been done before and can help your company navigate that digital transformation. So if you're a data professional, you're capable of not just solving technology problems, but also understand business problems that you're solving, you're immensely valuable to your organization. Here's another data point. More than 500 million digital apps and services will be developed by 2023. This is quite impressive. To put in perspective, it's uh, more than what has ever been developed in the last 40 years. 
Okay, amazing, amazing growth. So it's important to think about where will these apps run, and how and where organizations will generate and store and consume all of this new data. So that's a data-driven organization, right? If we think about data that's generated everywhere, companies want the flexibility to host their applications on different platforms. They need the ability to store and actually analyze it in different uh, locations. And as this year has shown us, we need the ability to react quickly to business disruptions. We believe 2021, next year, will be the year of multi-cloud. Companies that were impacted by COVID-19 but had already been using cloud-based technologies were able to scale up and down and adjust more easily with these fluctuations in demand. And not only Looker is committed to helping these customers be on multiple clouds and multiple databases, but also Google Cloud. For example, we just launched BigQuery Omni this summer as a proof of the commitment of Google Cloud as a whole to this open environment. We recognize that you want flexibility when choosing where you run your applications and where you store your data and analyze it. And we will continue to support you. And the way we will support you even better is by leveraging the fact that we're now not just lookers, but also Googlers. We're able to take advantage of not only Google's resources and technology, but also the environment we live in to build a better product for you, our customers, and to make you more successful. Very excited about the possibilities. Uh, we remain faithful to our product vision, which is based on essentially four pillars. First and foremost, continuing to invest in our ability to support enterprise caliber use cases, followed closely by a rich development platform you can use to create any data experience you can imagine. Of course, we want to be open. Make sure you can use Looker no matter what database you're running on or what cloud you're using. And last but not least, developing an experience with Looker that makes things simpler for all of you. Whether you're an analyst, an administrator, or an end user, we want Looker to be easy to use. This vision guides our product decisions. We have to be able to perform rich analytics across different clouds, different customer data sets, be them in real-time transaction data source, high-performance cloud databases, or Hadoop environments. We want Looker to be the single source of truth that connects all this data with people in the way they want to experience it. And that is key. It could be a BI tool, insights embedded into a customer portal, or a data-driven workflow that automates a business process, or even a custom data application. This is fundamental to Looker's vision. We recognize that there's more than one way to use data. A roadmap is guided by the conviction that different types of people in different types of roles need and want to experience data in different ways. In other words, a dashboard is not always the answer to every data problem. A C-level executive, for example, needs to experience data differently than a data analyst. And maybe a data analyst needs to experience data also differently than a digital marketing person, for example. We don't want to treat everyone or every data workflow the same way. There's more than one way to use data. And that's where you, our customers, also do. Many of you are finding very innovative ways to derive value from data. Some of our customers are using Looker for BI support decision making across the organization. Super fair. Others are using Looker to build applications that don't look like BI. But all these customers are successfully creating a data culture because they understand that different people need data in different ways. Let's look at Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, for example. Uh, one can say that they are one of the companies that built Japan's manufacturing industry. More than 4 trillion yen in business every year. And like many large manufacturers, they're facing the challenge of digital transformation. They have a group that's actually using Looker, BigQuery, and Amazon Redshift to help the company navigate the journey. Multi-cloud is essential, essential for their business. One example of how they use Looker in that particular area is in their industrial machinery dashboard. So they're collecting and visualizing data from IoT devices installed in their production lines. The dashboard monitors information such as production quantities, speed, error rates, and so forth. What makes it really different is that the dashboard is just the beginning. They realized that the team wasn't thinking just about uh, obtaining the data, but they needed a way to collaborate to deliver to their end users. And 
by doing that, they realized that Looker is more than just a BI tool and leveraged the value of the integration of Looker with Slack to communicate with their end users and take advantage of the collaboration features we offer. While at the same time delivering data exploration capabilities and data governance. Pretty amazing example that goes well beyond BI. Another example is Car Next Door. Car Next Door is a car sharing company in Australia. And uh, their team has already getting quite a bit of value from Looker across a number of different functions. For example, optimizing marketing campaigns, improving customer support, and so on. But they then use Looker in a very different way than was actually expected. Last year, there was a severe hail storm that hit parts of Australia. That storm caused damage to many of car next door's vehicles, uh, resulting in high repair costs and disruption to their services. So they thought about how do they reduce their future downtime and losses and continue delivering an excellent customer experience. So that's when they decided to develop an application using Looker to prepare for future weather events. That's quite fascinating. Now they use Looker's geospatial capabilities so they can identify cars in locations that are associated with weather events. And in combination with other technologies like uh, Segment and Brace, they can not only warn drivers about the risks they may be facing, but they also can better manage their fleet so they can provide a more reliable customer experience. And that's a great way to deliver data in the right way for their users. The customer examples I've shared today are super valuable, but they're also very different. And we think that's great. We don't want to tell you how you use your data. We want to enable and build technology to support the way you work. Like our founder Lloyd said, and I know Lloyd, if you're listening to this, I speak on behalf of everyone, we love you. Building great software is an act of empathy. And we at Looker want to build the tools, the confidence, the platform so that you can do whatever you want, whatever data experience you imagine. Be it a dashboard to actually deliver insights, be a specific application to work differently with the data that you have. We are here to empower people through the smarter use of data. With that, let me invite Jane Green to the stage to introduce you to our next guest speaker. Thank you. Thanks for the excellent info and perspectives, Ronaldo. Now for a special customer presentation about being data-driven and PBL, powered by Looker, and how that combo helps drive growth at Wix.com. Please join me in welcoming Ronnie Elkham, SVP Mobile, App Market, and Strategic Products, Wix.com. All yours, Ronnie. Thank you, Jen. I'm very happy to, he to be here and speak about Wix Analytics Initiative. My name is Ronnie El Kayam, and I'm leading several groups at Wix. Some of these groups are in the infrastructure space, like the mobile platform, rich, rich content platform, and much more. Others are industry vertical solutions, like hotels, restaurants, events, and more. While others are more horizontal solutions, like the Wix app market, pricing plans, subscriptions, and the one that we're gonna speak about today, the new Wix Analytics solution. Now, before jumping into Wix Analytics, let me share some details about Wix. Wix was founded in 2006 with a beautiful flash site builder. Later, it became an HTML5 site builder. We set ourselves a much wider mission to empower everyone to create, manage, and grow online. While Wix is best known for its website building tools, you should know that website is just the tip of the iceberg. Behind the scenes, we have a set of tools for full business management, tools for many types of businesses and communities, from online stores to event planning, restaurants, hotels, and many more. We also provide a set of marketing tools to grow the business online, and of course, a website and native apps for business or community. Over the years, Wix has grown a lot. Let me share some of our amazing numbers. We have next to 200 million users using our system. Five million of them are premium subscribers and many of them are businesses. We're adding users at an amazing pace of more than three million users per month. If I would need to point out our keys to success, I would say that we are extremely customer centric. We listen to our users and we click quickly solve their needs. We're also super data-driven. We know what happens with our users, we measure everything, and we constantly improve. Now, with that in mind, 
we went out to help our users to be successful and grow their business. And nothing will help them more than understanding their data behind the business and improve with that. And we created a team in Wix and we defined a clear mission statement for that team. We would like to allow Wix users to make data-driven decisions for running a successful business or a community. Our users had no real alternative. If they wanted to know what's their most growing user segment in sales or engagement, or know where to spend their next advertising money, they had no solution. There was no single place that could show them online how their online business is doing. We had to solve the problem for our users and provide them with this value. Our mission is simple, but executing on it is extremely hard, mainly since we had to consider the massive scale of almost 200 million users. We also defined the goal to have low latency. It needs to play well with the overall experience we have in Wix. The diversity of, the, of our solution uh, is a challenge. Also collecting data from multiple verticals is not easy. Keep in mind that Wix users are tech savvy, but some of them are not. Think about a single, single location restaurant owner. Most chances they do not employ an analyst in the kitchen. Last, we wanted to ensure to maintain the Wix brand, create user-friendly solution that is cost-effective effective, and we can launch fast. That's easy, right? We needed to define also our data strategy. Due to the variety of business solutions, we have hundreds of different services and databases that store our user data. We knew that we wanted a single database to hold the data so we can easily create data insights across many solutions. We wanted the data to be near real time. If you are a business owner and you receive an order, you want, to, you want it to reflect immediately on your reports. And more importantly, you want to get alerts and notifications in real time. To allow maximum flexibility in queries, we decided to avoid data aggregation. Pre-aggregation of data has its advantages, but it also limits you to the queries that you know today. It is not good for queries that our users would want to build and not good for our future queries. With all that in mind, should we make it or buy it? This was the key question we wanted to answer quickly before we start investing. Obviously, there are many pros for making such a solution in-house. To name a few, we would build it with the exact same experience Wix users are used to. We would have full control on the roadmap and decide what features go out and when. We would be able to tailor the solution to all types of users very easily. But there are also many pros to buying a solution. The most important one is time to market. We would go out very fast and provide value to our users sooner. We would buy a set of features and knowledge that it would take us years to accumulate. And of course, it will probably lower the total cost of ownership by maintaining a smaller team over time. Well, eventually we decided to buy and ensure we cater the most professional users really, really fast. After a five extensive weeks of proof of concept with several vendors from the database and visualization spaces, we decided to go with a combination of Snowflake as a database and Looker as the modeling and visualization. The combination of Looker and Snowflake running on AWS gave us the best solution tailored for our specific needs. Specifically with Looker, we like the fact that we that it's aligned to our continuous integration development methodologies. Relatively easy to create models and relatively easy to maintain them over time and much more. Following the signing, we started rolling out the solution. Within just seven weeks, we had our first reports product launch. And this is how it looks like. We rolled out more than 20 reports in the first phase. The, reports, the report is a Looker iframe embedded inside the Wix dashboard. Wix users with businesses that generate sales are able to see how their business is doing and if it's a gym, for example, with booking or a blog with paid posts or whatever business they are running on Wix, they can see it right here. The same reports are available on our native mobile app, almost the exact view as an embedded web view. These reports on mobile or on desktop are being used by many tens of thousands of users every day. 
displayed in less than 5 seconds on median. But reports is obviously not enough. We needed to expose the metrics on the main Wix dashboard. So this is how it looks like. Keep in mind that this screen generates nearly 10,000 queries per minute, so you can imagine the massive scale it, that it has. Here, we're using our own UI, but the queries are sent via an API to Looker. We use the data modeling layer that we defined on Looker, and from Looker, the queries are sent to, to Snowflake. Data is displayed here in less than three seconds and uses real-time queries. It's quite amazing, amazing given the size of data and the number of queries per minute that we need to have. And obviously this is also available on our, on our native mobile app. Also here we have native UI controls with the data coming from Looker in real time. So what's next on our plate? Now that we have exposed data to our users, we're ready to deal with real themes, insights and actions that will really help our users improve on their business. Here's a small glimpse where we apply intelligence to guide our users on things that they should be doing to increase their traffic, sales, or user base. In this example, we created comparable metrics for every business industry, and we give them guidance on how to climb to bid it on the top 20% of their industry. We're progressing well, and we're planning to do much more in the near future. Here's a, just a short list of it. As an example, we're building anomaly detection algorithm that will trigger on anomalies of traffic or sales for every different business that we have and send it as an alert. Let me remind you that we kicked off this project just a few months ago at the beginning of 2020. We would not be in such a good place if we were to build it on our own. We can confidently say right now that we're in the right track to complete our mission very fast. Obviously not everything is nice and easy. I invite you to hear more about the project and its challenges from Miki Baram, head of Wix Analytics, in a separate session. Thank you. Well done, Ronnie. Thank you. Now, a truly exciting keynote product announcement from Jamie Davidson, Looker's Director of Product Management. Hello everyone and welcome to Join 2020. Thanks so much for taking the time to be here with us. I'm Jamie Davidson and I run the product team at Looker and I'm excited to introduce some exciting new functionality that we're launching. At Looker, our mission is to empower people through the smart use of data. I'm gonna start with how we're helping customers find insight. I'm excited to announce that we're releasing a brand new dashboard to GA. This is a result of nearly two years of effort and we couldn't be prouder. Our new dashboards are more performant, more configurable, and more intuitive with the same tight integration with your semantic model. Our new dashboards are gonna make interactions even more intuitive and allow for filtering using the content directly. This cross-filtering leverages the relationships already encoded in your semantic model LookML and our in-database architecture that allows for interactive queries over petabytes of data in databases like BigQuery, Snowflake, and Redshift. We're taking huge steps forward improving the core BI experiences and Looker for reporting and self-serve analytics, but what about users that aren't in front of their computers? To empower our users, we wanna bring data wherever they are. So we're excited to be releasing a new native mobile application for iOS and Android, where insights will be at our users' fingertips. Looker has always been a platform for enabling customers to create data experiences, to leverage data and drive insight and action. We're going beyond dashboards and self-serve exploration. One of the most exciting new enhancements in Looker is our new extension framework. It's a powerful development framework that allows developers to deploy JavaScript applications on top of the Looker platform with no need of DevOps or infrastructure to host your experience. Your applications can take full advantage of Looker's APIs via our SDKs and UI components to enable you to easily build custom experiences and leverage our user permissions and authentications. We've already seen some incredible things being built by our customers and partners, and they've given us really positive feedback so far. We're excited to be opening up the extension framework to see what you build next. Our customers and partners aren't the only ones that are going to have fun with the extension framework. We at Looker are taking full advantage of it as well. The Entity Relationship Diagram is a new extension that we're making available. 
The ERD is going to allow you to visualize relationships and easily understand your LookML models. It'll speed up development and enable everyone in your organization to jump in and understand your model's data. You can find the ERD in all of our extensions within the Looker Marketplace. Marketplace was released in open beta earlier this year, and we've seen tremendous engagement. Over 1,500 customers have quickly and effortlessly deployed custom visualizations, Looker blocks for data sources and analysis, and of course, our extensions. The Marketplace is a repository that brings all of this content together to accelerate your path to get value from data and from Looker quickly. And speaking of Looker blocks, we recently announced a new set of solutions that bring the power of BigQuery machine learning models to life for marketers in a matter of minutes. These analytical products are operational out of the box, many with machine learning models and actions built in for the Google marketing platform and Google ads. For more detail, check out the join session, Looker for Google marketing platform. This week, we're also releasing another solution. The Looker BI modernization solution is designed to reshape how organizations think about business intelligence, helping customers of legacy BI tools modernize their approach and enable business transformation. This solution helps customers go beyond building and maintaining low value reports and dashboards to creating innovative ways to solve high value business problems through the smarter use of data. Talk to your account rep or CSM for more details. Looker's unique in database architecture enables us to leverage best in class cloud native data warehouses. This in-database architecture also represents an opportunity for Looker to drive performance in a layered approach. We focus on the front-end client and drove substantial performance improvements in dashboards. We focus on the Looker platform, and we also focus on the underlying database. Building on aggregate awareness that we released earlier this year, I'm excited to announce a broad set of improvements that broaden the use case that aggregate awareness can serve. We now support count distincts. We support configuration of the tables for performance tuning. We've built on our understanding of dates, and we've also importantly allowed these optimized aggregates to be used with joint tables. We've had incredible customer feedback. We've seen some customers improve specific dashboard performance by over 99% and decrease the cost and impact on their data warehouses. Very cool product announcements, Jamie. And more cool stuff on the way coming up right now some thrilling new features and a demo by Looker product manager, Ariel Strong. Hi everyone, I'm Ariel Strong, a product manager at Looker. And Jamie just walked us through some amazing updates that we have coming out in the product. And I'm looking forward to showing you them in action. So to start, let's check out our brand new dashboards. Over the past few months, we've been putting a lot of finishing touches on our new experience, and we're happy to announce that they're now available in general availability. We've added a bunch of new features, all with the goal of giving you more flexibility in designing experiences that are powerful, but easy for everyone to use. To start out, I wanna design a dashboard that's going to let my marketing team do a quick analysis of our users. They're gonna to wanna to understand how well each of our marketing channels are doing. I've already added a quick filter in here for them to quickly change the time frame. And with our new filter controls, it's much easier to select different ranges. But let's add one more filter. I know our team is going to want to slice by newly acquired versus existing users. So I'm going to go into edit mode here and add a brand new filter. With our new configuration, it's really easy to find that field for repeat customers. I can add that in. And then with this configuration, I can also choose how I want that filter to look and feel and where I want it to belong on the dashboard. So I can quickly switch between our new options such as checkboxes or radio buttons, or in this case, I'm gonna leave it as just a button toggle so that it's easy for them to switch between. I can decide if I want these filters to be front and center directly in that filter bar, or maybe if I have a bunch of filters, I don't want too many to clutter up the dashboard so I can put them into an overflow. But in this case, this one's pretty important, so we'll keep it front and center. All right, so now we can run that filter. We're gonna switch this to just look at newly acquired users. Now, I know our team is probably gonna have many more questions about this data set. They're gonna wanna dive into some of those specific regions and channels, uh, but luckily with our new cross-filtering feature, I can turn that on and enable my team to really quickly slice and dice and ask as many questions as they'd want. It's just a really quick button to do so. 
Now, let's say they just ran an email campaign. They might want to click directly into email. They can filter all of the tiles around it. They can see where in the US most of our users have come from, in this case, California. And then if they want to ask a follow-up question, maybe they want to compare our users that we acquired through email versus those who came in organically. Again, they can keep drilling in here. And with cross-filtering, they can now really quickly get a sense for this data. So they might notice that while most of our users are actually acquired organically, those that came in through an email campaign actually have higher retention. So our new dashboards, they have a whole new look and feel, much more configuration, and new interactivity. And the cool thing about cross-filtering in particular is that the feature works just as you'd expect it to in Looker against your live data set. So there's no limitations on the data size that we can interact with. Okay, now what if you or your users are not actually at their laptop but still want to access this information? Well, luckily you can do just that through our new mobile app. It's available on both iOS and Android, and it'll be available for download directly from the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. So I'm gonna switch into my phone, and with the Looker app, I can pick up right where I left off on the web. I can access the dashboards I was just looking at. I can go check out my frequently viewed content under favorites. I can collaborate with my coworkers on boards. But in this case, let's dive back into that dashboard that we were just looking at. It's still just as easy to filter and interact with this dashboard as it was on the web. And it's optimized for viewing on a smaller device. So I can turn it landscape, which gives me a much bigger view of my data and allows me to see the details with more granularity. Now, usually when I'm on my phone, I wanna share something with a coworker. I can quickly just share this dashboard with someone else now as a text, email, or even as a Slack message. So mobile makes it really easy to see and share all of my metrics from anywhere. Now let's talk about how we can make both dashboards and generally just looker queries really fast. Aggregate awareness lets you get blazing fast performance even on huge data sets. In this case, I have a data set with over 3.3 billion events from gaming devices. But this dashboard really just computes high level metrics, things like the overall event count, and then it's broken out again by month. Now, I used aggregate awareness on the left two tiles to pre-compute the number of events for each day. So then computing these metrics on top is really fast. So to see how fast it is, let's refresh this dashboard. Now, you'll notice that it's only going to take a second or two to get these, these two queries back on the left-hand side. But on the right side, where I'm generating two of the same tiles but without aggregate awareness, they're still running. And it's going to take a while, so we'll come back and check on those in a bit. Now, aggregate awareness isn't just good for making dashboards fast. It can make all of your end users explore their data faster. So here I have Looker's Explore experience, and I'm gonna do some ad hoc analysis on top of that same data set. Now I'm gonna build up a simple query, again, like events by month, but without me even knowing that aggregate awareness exists, when I run this, Looker is going to automatically use those aggregate tables to give me back blazing fast performance. So you can see here at the top, Looker even tells you that it took advantage of those aggregate tables. And if I switch over into our SQL view, we can also see that it's using the existing ag tables to run this query. But the beauty is that for the end user, if I wanted to add in something else like the URI or some other detailed attribute that was not included in those original aggregates, you can still run the query. It's just going to take a little more time. So Looker is able to automatically detect when it should use an aggregate table versus when it should go to the more granular table for detailed information, which gives you the best of both worlds. Now, if we're back on this original dashboard, we can see that the queries without aggregate awareness have completed. But if we look at our query history, the ones with aggregate awareness only took about a second to run. But the ones that did not use aggregate awareness took upwards of 20 seconds. So with aggregate awareness turned on, your queries are going to run orders of magnitude faster. And finally, I'm excited to share updates to our application development platform. Looker provides the foundation for developing robust data and web apps. And today we already offer a bunch of tools like iframes, APIs, SDKs, and even UI components like you can see here. Now these tools help developers build unique data applications. 
And we're bringing them all together and making it even easier with Looker's extension framework. Looker's extension framework collects all of these developer tools in one place, and it gets rid of the complexity in building applications like standing up servers or worrying about an IDP or authentication system. To show you an example of how all these tools can come together to create new applications, we built a data dictionary on the extension framework. Now you'll notice a few things about this data dictionary. One is it's a totally new application inside of Looker. It's not a dashboard, it's not a look, it's not an explorer, but it still exists inside of the application next to everything else. And two is it's built using all of those developer tools. So you can see here I've selected a filter and that filter are the same filters that you saw inside of Looker's new dashboard. Those are UI components that you can now use. We're also leveraging Looker APIs, like you can see here, to pull back metadata from the model. So to show you a bit under the hood, here's another example of an extension that we call the kitchen sink. And it's called that because it shows how all of those different tools come together, like the iframes, SDKs, and APIs. So along with custom JavaScript, you can easily run our APIs, just like running a query or searching folders to find existing content or you can access your existing content directly through an iframe and bring those into your new application. So to really bring this to life, I'm gonna show you two more example extensions. First up, we have an extension that we call Looker Feed. And this is a newsfeed-like experience that brings a social aspect to Looker. And because it's built on the extension framework, it sits right inside of Looker so you can still interact and get to the same great Looker content. For example, I can click on this KPI that's in the trending list, and it's going to take me right out to the Explore where I can continue to do further analysis. And second, we have an example HR application that was also built on the extension framework. This combines iframes such as this tile you can see here. So again, I can continue to interact and drill in just like the content I have in Looker. But it's also built with our SDKs and some custom JavaScript to really bring to life an interactive application that a recruiting team might use to manage their pipeline. And all of these extensions can be easily deployed and installed through our marketplace. You can find great content like our data dictionary, and you can install that with just one click. You can install new visualization types, or you can download all types of Looker blocks like our new Google marketing platform block. And this one in particular was built with some of the marketing experts here at Google. So thanks for joining the demo today. We're super excited to see what you end up building with Looker's new tools. A Looker app? That was excellent. Thank you, Ariel. And now let's join Jamie Davidson once again for our final keynote presentation, a Looker product roadmap. All yours, Jamie. At Looker, our mission is to enable people to make smarter use of their data. First, I want to talk about the core of Looker, our foundation. This includes our hosting infrastructure, our security, and our data model. Looker has been multi-cloud and data infrastructure agnostic from the start. At GCP, we're still committed to helping customers leverage the right infrastructure for the right use case. We support hosting in AWS and GCP today, and we'll be supporting hosting in Azure in 2021. We're going to continue to be data infrastructure agnostic, and we currently support over 60 different SQL database versions. We also remain committed to security and compliance. We've got a wide range of certifications that we're continually investing in and adding to. As we integrate into the broader GCP infrastructure, it'll also enable us to offer further controls to give customers configuration of their, their system to fit their needs. For performance optimization, we're investing heavily in how we generate customers' aggregate tables and PDTs, starting with a more robust build process that enables incrementally updating aggregations. This more robust transformation, coupled with our new aggregate awareness, will allow for performance and cost optimizations across immense data sets. Like everything at Looker, we take a platform first approach and want to have broad API coverage for integration with other ETL tools to pass back information about orchestration and metadata. LookML is the core of Looker's platform. It allows for expression of data relationships and curating business logic. 
We want to make it even simpler to generate and maintain LookML. By automating the generation of LookML based on database schema and even SQL statements that encode data relationships, we can simplify and speed up the experience to generate a powerful curated semantic model. Building on that foundation I just talked about, now I'm going to switch gears and talk about the platform where we as Looker and our customers build customized experiences. Here's a grossly simplified view of the Looker application. LookML is at the base with data relationships and business logic. Explore is the UI on top of that model. Dashboards are content built on top of those explorers. And finally, search enables discovery of that content. We think that there's a spectrum of needs for data experiences where specific workflows and analyses are best suited to a tailored experience. Let's talk for a moment about how we are building them and how partners and customers can create custom tailored experiences easily. We announced a series of improvements to our extension framework earlier this year. This will allow you to run a custom JavaScript and host it within the Looker application. The extension framework's powering things like our data dictionary and new ERD, and it will power these tailored experiences that will enable templated analysis. Explore has all of the degrees of freedom that your model allows. Dashboards are constrained to only have the elements that are filterable as, as options. There's a gap in between. With the extension framework, we'll fill that gap with templated building environments to enable a new layer of abstraction built on top of a model and a defined explorer that sits in between that dashboard and explore. Now, Looker, we have a philosophy of 100%, 110% API coverage. Everything you do in the BI tool and more is exposed via API. We're building a suite of these experiences in these flexible platforms, but we want to enable customers and partners to build them as well. Let's take a look at what these experiences will enable. They simultaneously give users power while enabling a simple interface. Take this funnel example. It's winnowing a set of sessions based on events, steps, and standard filters. It's possible to do inside Looker's Explorer interface, but requires deep knowledge. This tailored experience will take that power and make it easy for marketers and product managers to understand user behavior. Here's a cohort tool. Users can simply define a cohort and drive insight. Here's a powerful and simple period over period analysis. The higher level parameterization of this tailored explore experience makes it easy to choose how to compare KPIs. These are all enabled by our extension framework, which we are continuing to develop to make this easy. With robust front end components to construct these powerful experiences, we'll also be integrating these extensions and content with our development environment to enable a modern software development workflow, not just for your data model, but also for your full data experiences. To make discovery and management of these experiences that will be built by us and contributed by partners and customers, we'll be expanding the functionality of our marketplace. Finally, let's talk more about the end user experiences. This is the surface of the application where people access data, find insight, and take action. To start, we're building on our brand new dashboards. We're not stopping here. We're increasing the customization and ease of use for core reporting and self-serve analytical experiences. After we were acquired by Google Cloud, one of the areas we're most excited about is leveraging GCP's best-in-class machine learning and AI services and bringing them into BI. Finally, Looker is a platform first and foremost. We want to bring access to governed data wherever a user is working, beyond just a BI tool. Our new dashboards dramatically increase the amount of customization that's possible, and we're not stopping there. We've been working on how to deliver highly customizable new content types, enabling customers to present data however the viewer will most easily drive insight. Looker is a flexible platform, and we're increasing the degrees of freedom and enabling you to easily add extensions into a dashboard, giving you greater control over the end experience that your users can consume. Just like we rebuilt our core dashboard experience, we're taking a look at data exploration too. 
One of the primary use cases for our Explorer interface is the creation of content. We want to make it easy to create rich visualizations and increase the amount of customization that's possible. Looker's Explorer is the interface to data and enabled by a model. But we want to simplify the customer experience. We don't want to require modeling for simple transformations or aggregations that can leverage it. The Explorer interface is very powerful. And while we're simplifying the interactions, there are time for specific analytical workflows where tailored experiences are faster and more intuitive. We'll be building and releasing powerful new analytical templates for common analysis for things like period over period or cohorts, like we discussed earlier, that are enabled by our extension framework and will be easy to engage with for new types of analysis. Google is a recognized industry leader in machine learning and AI. And as a part of GCP, Looker is going to take advantage of this expertise. In our curated semantic model, customers have already created a constrained vocabulary to access their data. By leveraging Google's NLP expertise, Looker will enable a new interface to your data, leveraging the model you're already using to analyze in our core Explore and dashboard interfaces. Looker's analytical alerts are a powerful way to use data to drive business workflows today. Those alerts are going to get even smarter. By leveraging GCP's anomaly detection and integrating it into Looker's platform, analysts will be able to select KPIs that matter for their business and rely on Looker to tell them when they're changing. Tailored experiences are great for common analytical workflows, as we've already talked about, like cohorting, but also can simplify the machine learning workflow and enable business users and analysts to leverage advanced machine learning practices like forecasting, clustering, classification, and more. Data and insight are only valuable if your users see it. Not every worker is going to be an ABI tool every day. Looker's platform easily enables you to integrate with tools like Slack or leverage Looker Actions to send data to Google Sheets today. We'll be deepening our integration with G Suite and enabling customers to view Looker trusted governed data and visualizations in G Suite's editor products like Slides and Docs. We'll continue to build out our Action Hub framework to enable customers to easily close the loop and act on insight in one tool like you see inside our GMP blocks today. At Looker, we're focused on helping our customers create value from their data, and we're really excited for what's coming. Thank you so much for joining us. That brings our Join at Home keynote presentation to a close. Thank you for spending your time with us today. It was an honor to be your host. Crazy schedule this week? No worries. All on-demand, Looker-led, and customer stories are now available to be viewed at your leisure. And don't forget to join us tomorrow for our interactive sessions. Bring your questions to the kitchen table to chat with DCL or drop in and watch a Looker demo. We'll see you Thursday and Friday for our live instructor-led workshops and join at home's virtual hackathon, Hack at Home. Many thanks to all of you for attending. Enjoy the rest of Join at Home and we'll see you next year.